Welcome to the Erasmus Foundation podcast. My name is Paul Nugent. Are you looking for answers to life and its meaning? Then this may well be the very podcast you need to listen to. In a series of podcasts, we are going to look at the difficult questions of life and apply spiritual knowledge to find out the answers. Hello. Today we're going to look at a question. Is what we want what we need? And the idea behind this question is that many of us wish to find things in life to make it easy to live happily and contented throughout our life without any hassle, any pain, any disappointment, any of this, without any financial concerns, etc., etc. But the question is asked in this way because perhaps what we want is really not at all what we need. So we have today with us, we have Mike, Corinne, and Julia. So Mike, what do we need or what do we want and which is which? Well, this is a very interesting question. And I guess the answer would be very much varied um, from different people when you ask that, depending on how they they view that question. The, the first part of that, what do we what do we want? That would be very different depending on where someone is in their life and what they feel is important to them. So, for some, we could be looking materially at, at possessions. Another, it could be financially we could be emotionally in a relationship with someone it could well be for more knowledge and wisdom in a certain aspect whether that be academically or 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 just something something that someone individual wishes to research and learn about so it is very very varied i would say if i was to say this from a humorous point of view not to take this seriously as myself, but but if I imagine myself standing in some in front of a shop window, and inside that shop there's a there's a tailored suit, a jacket with trousers, a lovely shirt with cuff links, and a pair of polished shoes. I could look at that and think, oh yeah, that that that's that's very much me. I'd look very dapper in that. Yes, I, I want that, I need that suit. So I go in and I buy that suit. Then I come out and I walk along the road and I see, say, a car showroom. And there's all these lovely new cars in there. And I look at these cars and I think, well, oh, yes, that's, that's, that's lovely. I, that would get me from A to B a bit quicker. And there's lovely, comfortable seats and super economy on that vehicle. So I buy that car. I then drive down the road and I think, by well, this time I'm feeling a bit hungry. So, so I want something to eat, but I, I want something special. So I, I'll, I'll go to... A, a gastro restaurant, for example, doesn't matter what it costs, but I, I want something something that I can really tease my taste buds with and enjoy. Now, on a serious note, all of these things, if I start at the shop, and unless I'm looking to get myself arrested or I'm very forgetful, I'm not going to be naked. I've, I've got some clothes on, so I don't need clothes. I've already got a car myself. And as for food, I've got enough food at home in my cupboard or produce in the garden that I could rustle something up and prepare myself something. So what is it that drives me or anyone else as an individual to want, in this instance, mainly material possessions? Well, we do live in such a a hectic, busy world, and we are probably subconsciously, we're bombarded um regularly with with um i suppose advertising and commercials whether that be on telly radio newspaper on the internet and all these adverts and these companies are all telling us they're very clever at this 
Um, they're all telling us what we want and what we need and how these, these items are going to improve our lifestyle. For example, a simple example would be, and I'm sure most people can relate to this and have seen this, we, we, we get lots of adverts for, say, a face cream. And this would be aimed at either a lady or a man. And this would be an anti-aging, anti-wrinkle face cream. And the advert would be portrayed by either a very glamorous young model or a handsome celebrity footballer, for example. And they'll tell us all what it does for us and how it will improve our life, lifestyle and make us feel better. And a lot of people will get sucked in by this and go along with this and they'll buy the product and so on and so forth. And this, this is the same across so much in, in our world, especially in the, in the Western world today. Life is so hectic at the moment. Everyone has got, got to be somewhere yesterday. You know, there's no time to contemplate things and think about things. It's often said by spirit, I've heard this said, about taking a moment just to be. And I think that is an important part of our lives, is just to enjoy the moment we're in. People will say to me about, you know, they're, they're, they're so stressed out, they're so busy, they don't know whether they're coming or going. And they want to get away from it, they want a holiday or they want to retreat. Um, and quite often I've heard, oh, they, 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 want, they want a spiritual experience. And yet it's funny, Paul, because as we know, I believe, we are spirit. We come from home. We've taken a life here to live within a humanoid body to experience and to evolve either ourselves or others around us spiritually. So we are having that experience and yet we are, are so wrapped up within the hustle and bus, bustle of life that we actually miss a lot of that and, it, and it's going past. So Whilst not, not everyone would necessarily find meditation easy, um, but even if you was to find a, a quiet place, whether that be in your garden or a park or maybe at the seaside or whatever you, you feel is a quite relaxing place, I would suggest to go there and, and just, 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 as I say, if you can't meditate, just, just browse, just think quietly. And it's at them times, I know it, it works for me, you get a lot of clarity of thought. And with that clarity, for me, that, that, that gives me the answers to, to this very subject of, you know, it is, is what we want, what we need. A lot of the time, it isn't. Other people may have different views to me or, 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 or look at this from a different angle. But that, that's how I sort of see things, Paul. Thank you, Mike. Very good. Thank you. Corinne, mm -hmm. what would you like to say on this subject? Well, I completely agree with what uh, Mike has said about advertising. In this economical uh, system we are living in at the present time, based on uh, consumption, the, the sellers, in a way, want to create false needs. And they do their best for people to want to buy goods. Now, it, it is the end of the fifth civilization. And the flaws are being very strong. And among the seven flaws, there is envy. There is jealousy, perhaps greed as well. I am believing that the advertisers are using these flaws, you know, in a way, to, to attract uh, people uh, to buy these goods. Now, as we have said, as human spirits, we have got the physical part of us and we have got the spiritual, the spirit inside of us. 
And nowadays, man has a bit lost himself. Man has lost perhaps um, the contact with the spirit inside. And man has become very materialistic. It is just a thought, but I am wondering if people want material goods, is it to feel something they are missing, perhaps, replacing with the material, the spiritual spirituality that is missing in, in their lives? I, it is just a wonder I have got. They want to possess things in a way. Some people, in fact, want to have instead of to be. For us, having received spiritual tuition, having searched for our spiritual dimension inside of us, most of us, we prefer to be than to have or to possess. Now, as human beings, we have a body and we have some needs. We need food and water to sustain our body. We need shelter. We need some energy to warm our bodies, our homes when it is cold. And it is normal that we want to live in a, a comfortable place. But the problem is that some people want more and more and more than is necessary. People want to eat things that perhaps are not needed for a healthy body, such as perhaps sugar, sweet things, meat, or too much meat. Um, for the houses, some people want to have big houses with several garages to park all their cars, a swimming pool. The problem is that man perhaps wants too much. And there is now a gap between what is wanted and what is needed. And this gap is due to the way man has developed materialistically, because I am sure that the natural law provides to us all what we need. And now, in his greed, man is destroying the earth. Thank you, Corinne. Julia, what's your take on this initially? Um, well, I think, first of all, I suppose I'm thinking, obviously, when we're at home and we view some tapestries, obviously, we are simply spirit with complete knowledge of ourselves. So we choose a tapestry because we feel we need to be challenged and tested in a certain way. Um, but obviously, when we come to the earth, the memory box is closed. And given the way the world is at the moment, it's not um, encouraging for the mind to have space. It's too much noise and too much of the brain. So it's, you know, it is a difficult time to live. So I feel that our wants and needs are very individual because of how we are structured uh, for the life and within the tapestry. And the tapestry itself will perhaps dictate to a certain extent what we feel we might like. Um, I mean, to think of my own life, I probably feeling more on an emotional side, I think I felt 
I wanted to be liked and accepted, but that was because I didn't have the confidence and the stability from um, my younger days. Whereas another person and another time, you might have built up a strong enough foundation in yourself and belief in yourself not to feel you would want those things. So it is a very individual thing. And I think very much aligned with the tapestry, which of course has been designed for you by the great mind. And then thinking about what you need, I'm sure when you think about what you want, it's very often perhaps not what you need. But I think having been through something, say a test, it it might be a freedom of choice, it might not. But I think if you can be honest with yourself, I would hope that many people could look back on something and think, well, it's not something I would have asked for, perhaps wanted, but I realised that it was something I needed because what it has given me, you know, it might have given me or someone a little bit more uh, awareness and understanding of yourself and of others. Perhaps you feel a little stronger. Of course, we would talk about spiritual strength, but people might just feel um, more confident and maybe more sure of of themselves and what they want out of life. So those are my initial thoughts uh, on the subject. Now, Mike, as Julia has pointed out, we are all living a tapestry, a life that is designed for us, for a purpose, and that is for us to grow spiritually. That's the whole reason behind us taking a life here on the earth. Nothing else, really, just for us to evolve spiritually. That's the bottom line. And part of that experience is the fact that we are pushed, if you like, or or given challenges that will enable us to grow spiritually. Part of that is actually experiencing pain, oddly enough. It is a necessary part of our lives for us to grow. That's the bottom line. What would you like to say in response to what I've just said? Yes, that's uh, that. That really is an interesting point, isn't it, Paul? Because we, when we talk about pain, on a if, if you look at it from a either a physical or an emotional point of view, there's very few people that that would that would agree with what you're saying there, Paul. Because no one, no one likes to feel pain, do they? No. Um, but. I can understand, and and I would say I personally understand, without going into too much detail, as it is a very personal subject area, but someone close to me in my family went through a traumatic experience, and that left me with a lot of emotional pain because I wasn't there at the time when this incident happened, and I had no physical way of doing anything about it. And at the time, which is a few years ago, that really did trouble me for a long time. I had a lot of sleepless nights over it, um, a lot of turmoil. And at the time, Paul, I would say I couldn't understand how I would... Um, how that would benefit me spiritually to evolve because it was very, very much, um, very much, I suppose my brain was, was, was answering a lot of questions and giving me a lot of questions at the time. But as the years have gone by, and I've thought about this several times, many times this has come to me, it is, in a, in a way, it's learning, for me, I suppose, acceptance. That, 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 that's, that's the main thing I've learned, to accept that as much as you, you might wish to control every aspect of our lives or other people's lives, 
There are some things that you can't, and you have to accept that. You have to accept that sometimes events happen that may or may not be tapestried. I, I couldn't answer that with any any you know, certainty. But sometimes these things, as I say, happen. You have to accept that they happen. And in a way, it's it's given me, I suppose, uh, I suppose a tiny little bit of wisdom somewhere along the the, the, the the way to to come to terms with with that. So that that that's kind of my take on to it on it really, Paul. Thank you. And about you, Corinne, what do you think about what Mike said and what I said? What, do you have anything to say on the matter? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, in fact, perhaps we want with our brains. And the thing is that when we are spirit at home, and we choose a tapestry, and we will see uh, where there is pain. And perhaps we will choose especially that tapestry, because as a spirit, we know that going through that pain is going to help us grow spiritually. And then when we are on the earth, the memory box is closed and we have completely forgotten. But it is the way it is. Uh, we have to leave it as a human, I am believing, for, for this evolution, this spiritual evolution to take place. So it is perhaps in the order of things that as a human, as a human being, we do not really want uh, to be ill, to go through difficult times, to feel pain. But if it is tapestried, we, we are going to leave it. And in living that experience, in going through, that then eventually, perhaps, we will realize what it brings us spiritually. Still, I am believing that we will completely understand it when we will be back home after this lifetime. Now, as we have already said, acceptance is the thing that can help to go through this. So, when there is something arising, at first we can say, oh, no, I don't want this. But then we can take a little distance, reflect, and search the acceptance to go through the test. And it will help to go through it if we can find acceptance. And spiritually, it will be uplifting. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you. Now, Julia. Yes. We have to live our life. It's it's what we do. We have a beginning and we have an end. We have to live this life. We've chosen it. We now need to live it. But there is a second part of us, not just the physical side. There's also the spiritual side. And if we make more access to our spiritual side, and work together with our physical as one, then surely that must help us to deal with any difficulty, pain, or test that we have to face in our life. Yes, I would say absolutely that is true. It's a journey, though, isn't it? I mean, we've spoken about this here in the Foundation I think it takes time, especially the way the world is at the moment, to surface the mind because so often the mind is not helped to surface and 
live our lives with us, if you like. But we do believe that within a tapestry, there often will be for people a time when we are touched by spirit. And I think at that time, we have more of an opportunity to use our minds and the mind will obviously help us think more clearly. It will give us answers to problems. And the way to help with this, of course, is, um, well, one way is through meditation or just sitting quietly and thinking through things and allowing thoughts to surface so that um, maybe you will find an answer of how to deal with something. So I agree, completely agree, Paul. The the mind, the spirit is really, it's an essential part of us. It's the essential you or me. And it is one half of a human being. And at the moment, people, a lot of people, just see themselves as a physical person. But if they realised about the spirit and what is within the spirit, the heritage of the spirit, all the wisdom that is there, and all that the spirit could do to help them in this life, um, what a wonderful gift this is. And it would be so helpful to everyone. And I think this is something we will see happen more and more. But I think we need to lose the noise of this world and the the fast pace and the materialism. In effect, a lot of the physical part of living needs to go so that the spirit has a chance to surface and help each individual. And our lives are very unique and whatever challenges we face, um, we all have challenges, of course, because there wouldn't be a point in coming to the earth without them. But without the help of our mind, our spirit, it is going to be much more difficult. So I think it's absolutely, um, I wouldn't say essential to surface your mind, because it may well be that someone is living a life where maybe the, the mind isn't to surface much or at all. But, you know, we certainly believe that the aim is to get to know ourselves physically and spiritually and bring the two to work together. And in that way, you are reaching out to the great mind in a very clear, simple and strong way. And I feel like Karina and Mike have said, this will help with um, an acceptance of what comes your way. And I think also it will give you um, clarity. And of course, you'll be using the strength that you have within you and maybe gaining a little more strength along the way as you go through whatever challenges come your way. But as I say, I think the key word here is, is individual. And how often do we perhaps look at other people's lives and think, well, I don't know why they're doing that or deciding this or that. You know, it seems straightforward to you. And probably someone is looking at you and thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, you know, we have our individual tests laid out for us by the great mind. And the pain we might feel will be very individual as well. Um, the same test would be more painful to one than another. So, you know, life is very interesting, very exciting. And I think we can learn a lot from each other and how they deal with their own lives. And I think that can help us as well in dealing with um, our journey. Thank you very much, Julia. So greetings, Bedina. Greetings. I know you would like to say something on the subject. Yes. Yes. Because I am speaking from spirit. And, of course, I have had lives on earth, of course. But from where we are in spirit, we see things 
a little differently at times. And what I wanted to say very simply is that you've been speaking of tapestries this evening. Correctly so. But what I wish to say is that when a spirit at home in the land of spirit requires to live a life on earth, they will seek permission and they will be shown a choice of tapestries. And from this point of view of spirit, in having acceptance, a subject you have talked about tonight quite well, but spirit having acceptance that having been shown a little of three tapestries designed by the great mind for three lives to be lived, we would choose one of these, which would be most appropriate, knowing full well what we are to experience is not necessarily what we want, but what has been designed for us, for our need to enable us to evolve and develop spiritually. And that is the purpose of accepting the life and coming to live as a humanoid on the earth. Now, in the future, when man generally has more of this understanding and knowledge about his spiritual self, then he will learn to have more acceptance with what happens within his life and what happens within lives of others who are near him. And I would suggest it would be of great benefit and help and support to people to know this in facing difficulties and challenges of life, in having an acceptance that this was meant to be for an experience that would teach us much, and in doing so, would progress us spiritually. And therein is its purpose. The Erasmus Foundation is a spiritual teaching and healing foundation based in Laxfield, Suffolk, in the United Kingdom. We have a web page, www.erasmus-foundation.org. If you would like to be a guest on our podcast, or indeed have further questions for us, then please contact me on paul at erasmus-foundation.org and we'll do our best to accommodate you. Thank you very much for listening.